good friend Mark White and his company, Acumoto. They are specializing in air-cooled vintage 911s, race cars and street cars. Look them up, acumoto.com. They're fantastic, exquisite pieces, the best in the world. And a couple of those are right behind me. Now, Mark, how did we meet? When did we meet? How long has it been? I think it's probably been 15 years or so. Wow, it doesn't seem like 15 years to me. Mutual friend introduced us. Probably like you meet a lot of people these days. Had way more car than I should have had and was struggling to figure out how to drive it. So <laughs> you helped me sort that right quick. Well, you know, you wanted to go fast. You definitely helped that. Part. What did you have back then? A uh, 996 Cup car. Oh, uh, yeah. Cup. I lived in those for about five years. Yeah, it, uh, it was amazing to me that not only the depth of knowledge that you had, but how it was pretty easy for you to be able to convey that to somebody, you know, that was way over their skis and had no idea what they were doing. So. <laughs> well, you let me drive your car. I did. I appreciate that. Absolutely. We were up at Autobahn yep. outside of Chicago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I drove it. And as I recall, I thought the thing was pretty nervous. <laughs> yeah, it definitely was. It was knife edge. I think that's the way you described it, actually, was knife edge. Uh -huh. You might have even used a knife at the dinner table to describe how <laughs> knife edge it was. Those of you who know me, you know what a big fan I am of a knife edge car that you constantly have to correct? Not so much. What did I say to you? How'd that think, conversation go? I think there was an assessment of the car and then also a, an assessment of my skills in that car. You helped me realize that maybe I didn't suck quite as much as I thought I did. So I taught you to blame the car. Exactly, yeah. 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 First step to being a race car driver, blame the car. When I met him driving the race car, he was blaming himself and, you know, apologizing for his driving and all that. And I was like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. I think we can make this a lot easier for you. You're working way too hard. Yeah, it was an eye-opening experience, to say the least. I had no idea. But, I mean, that's kind of the genesis for where our shop is today and the race program that we have. I had gone late in life through uh, a racing school and then without, well, I shouldn't say without any guidance. I got guidance. I just didn't get good guidance. I bought a, an old World Challenge uh, GT car and then... Anybody I know? Uh, I don't think so. I okay. think it was probably a mid to backpacker years ago, uh -huh. um, but it was still way more car than I had any right being in. Water cooled? Uh, no, that was, a, that air, was cooled. An air cooled car. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, okay. It's it actually a really cool car. It still oh. exists in our paddock today with a different customer. It had gone through a couple different people and we had an opportunity to get it. So one of our uh, very good customers now owns it and it's, it runs in GT in, in uh, wow. Portugal. Wow. The same car? Uh, same car. Yeah. Turbo or? In non turbo. Non, non turbo. Uh, three okay. six, excuse me, a 3 8 in it, slide valve. Oh. Which was, as the story is told, the last uh, spare engine that PMNA built for the Alex Joe program that oh. we drove for. No kidding. Yeah, so that would have been sitting on the shelf next to you when you're out hammering around in this. Yeah, my Alex Job racing days were some of the best I ever had in racing. Yeah. Especially the air cooled cars. Like one of my favorite race cars is a 993 RSR, but, but it's not an RSR, right? No, no, it's not, but it is the, it's the RSR engine. And so it's a 993? It's a, it's an interesting car. It's a 964 oh. with a 993 rear suspension assembly. Wow. It, dude, it, it's really cool. Like it, wow. I had no idea when I owned the car how cool it was. And I also had no idea when I owned the car how sweet it was in terms of, of its handling. It oh. did all these really un-911 things, right? Oh. Like it has way more grip in the rear than the front. Like it's just a great car to drive. I, I didn't know what I didn't know, so I got rid of that and then started, I bought a cup car, right? Because you should, because you can't drive yes. one car, so it's got to be the car's fault. So you buy another car that you also have no idea how to drive. <laughs> so, and I was lucky in that the shop that was supporting the car for me, all the mechanics took pity on me and they gave me all of the parts that had been marked junk. So all the takeoff stuff off of all the other customer cars, that's what I was running. So all the junk. All the junk. Tires, <laughs> rotors, pads, everything. Axle, everything. Like anything that was a, was a wear item on that car. Stub axles, everything. So. Well, I remember meeting you driving the car 
and saying, we've got to make this thing stable. As I recall, your line was, Randy Pobst introduced me to understeer. <laughs> yes. yes. And not, not huge understeer, but stability. So you're not constantly trying to catch the car. Yes. And then at the time, you didn't have a race shop. It was right. after that that you opened Akimoto. Correct. Somewhere in there, you and I raced uh, VW GTIs for APR. Yes. Yep. Thank you very much, by the way. Yeah, man. Thank you. And then I remember you raced some uh, Mazda Miatas. Yes. With, uh, I think with the Freedom team, yes. right? Freedom yep. Autosport, and, and so did had, I. We ended up being teammates again. Road America, yeah. we run together. Yep. Because that's your neighborhood. Yes. Where's, Ro where's Akimoto located? Akimoto is in Madison, Wisconsin, which is 100 miles from Road America. And I remember when I met you, you had built a couple of really superb choppers, motorcycles. Yeah. Now, now I hate choppers, but yours were fantastic because you are a crazy perfectionist. This is one of the nicest perfectionists you will ever meet. <laughs> I, I'll admit to being... Your stuff is perfect, Mark. Thank you. I'll admit to being a little nuts on the perfectionist side, but full disclosure, I did very little in the actual building of those bikes. I, I was the guy, and it's the same thing here. Like I have really talented people that I've been able to convince to come and work for the shop. And it was the same thing back in the day. I kind of you know, figured out what I wanted and conceptually put everything together, had a strong idea of what I wanted the end product to be, and then was able to get some people that helped me do that. It's not that I can't turn a screwdriver, like I can do that, but I know that there are guys that are way better at it than I am, so I wanted to be involved in the things that I was better at, and that certainly wasn't the, you know, the actual assembly of it. So. Mentioning motorcycles and Mark and his drive for things to be really done well, uh, everything on this team is that way, from the paddock setup, the transporters. He's got a pit vehicle that's it looks like a miniature VW van painted up like a vintage Porsche uh, repair service vehicle. He's got bicycles done to match each customer's car. Cafe racers, which I am into, yep. that he's done out of modern bikes. You've got one in your office. Yes. Right? Yeah, actually, that bike, uh, those bikes are now in my house because uh, my wife is continu continuing to have an exceptional sense of humor on things like that. So, Cafe racers in the house. Artwork. I happen to have Artwork. a cafe racer in my house. Yes. Two-wheeled art. Yep, absolutely. And your cars are like art. I mean, it, you, you specialize in a certain class of 911 race cars, right? Yes. For, for Porsche Club racing. Yes. Right? We, we've definitely hitched our wagon to Porsche Club and within Porsche Club, a specific class. It was for years known as, as Stock E and we've been able to, with some other fantastic people in the organization, other drivers, uh, kind of campaign the club to maybe allow us to expand upon that concept a little bit. So we've been able to create our own class, which is called 911 Cup. Really what we've done is we've taken that stock format that was popular for years and we recognized and accepted that the cars are the age that they are, right? Some of these cars are 40 years old, right? So we looked at what we could do to help, first of all, make the cars more safe. Coupled with that, how do we make them fun and containing the run costs, right? So they've allowed us to take weight out of the cars, which was a huge step in moving in the right direction. I hate rewards weight. Yep. I hate ballast. Yep. Yeah, the, I believe you make a race car as light as it can be and then make it handle. Right. And for us, particularly at the club level, getting or gaining or adding lightness can become expensive really quickly, oh, right? Yeah. Oh, so yeah. looking at, at the cars and the amount of ballast that most of the cars had bolted in to make this stock class, Right, oh. because they would allow us to change the bumpers, as an example, or some other things, you know, like a fiberglass deck lid or things like that, right? But all the rest of the car is all the original sheet metal with the glass in it. So the cars are kind of fat anyhow, in terms of a light race car. Uh -huh. So being able to move in that first, or take that first step to take the weight out of it definitely helped. So, so they're, was, they're kind of closely based uh, street cars. Very still. much so, yeah. It's still a yeah. stock, uh, still basically a stock drivetrain in it. Oh, okay. Uh, shocks are free, but all the pickup points and everything in the suspension have to remain intact. Oh, so. yeah. And what kind of 911 are they? What, what so, years? From 78 to 89. So the SC okay. 
and the Carrera. Yeah, the great classic air-cooled 911s that we Absolutely. that are, I always call them real Porsches. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. There's probably some people that would get all all up in arms about that, yeah, but I agree with you wholeheartedly. But and, certainly the 911. Well, and and that extends all the way back. I mean, you know, from the short wheelbase stuff on, all those cars are just so much better than most people realize. You know, and I, I would qualify that by saying. You know, one of the cars that we ran in the stock E-Class back in the day, we had 141,000 mile, uh, was a stock car. It had banged around in club racing, kind of mid-pack for a long time, so it had been a race car for quite some time, but it really was stock. You know, a little bit of suspension bits. We threw, uh, I think, R6s on it back in that, at that point in time, and we went to Daytona and lap after lap after lap, bang that thing off the rev limiter at 147 miles an hour or whatever across the stripe, and it just kept taking it. And I'm thinking about that, and I'm like, this was an 84, right? What car from 1984, other than that, could you take in its stock format and take it to Daytona and run it lap after lap after lap over the course of a, of a race weekend? And that's the beautiful part about <laughs> these cars is that, you know, they are able to and capable of doing that. So there really is something to this Porsche legend, especially the 911. Absolutely. They earned it. You know, you hear about 911s being such fantastic cars, and a guy like Mark knows firsthand. They really are. And it's in the 80s and the 70s, they were kind of light years ahead of everybody. And because a lot of cars were terrible in those days. Hey, you know what was a good car? It was a 77 VW Rabbit. <laughs> My first solo nationals. Yeah. Those were good cars. Yeah. That's where our so, shop truck is based on. Let's, uh, oh, yeah, shop truck. See, yeah. they've got all this stuff yeah. at Acumoto. He's got a, a cabbie. Yeah, it's an 81. A Volkswagen uh, pickup truck. Yep. And it's done right, because everything Acumoto does is done right. I get to drive them once in a while. I was going to drive one today, but it rained, and it, it just messed up our whole plan. So I'm going to have to get my opportunity later. And I was going to drive this one here. This is your car, right, Mark? Yes, sir. It's the... Tell us about the paint job. It looks vintage. Well, all of our cars, for the most part, have some type of vintage-esque livery on it. Uh, this livery, in particular, was made up. It basically got created oh, really? on a... Yeah. It, it involved a, some tequila and a bar napkin. <laughs> and, uh, Wait a minute. Uh, How many cars are in your fleet? Uh, it varies kind of depending upon what's happening, but we've had as many as 14 <gasps> in the shop at any given time. We've had 14, we've supported 14 cars at Sebring and Road America. 911 Cup cars? Well, at that point they were in stock E, but yes, this car. So, wow, as many as 14. Yeah. yeah. All right, now tell me here, what do we got? We got, we got a little Cuba, we got some sort yes. of 70s, yes. 80s yes. graphics. Yes. So this car was a 181,000 mile car that came out mm. of Miami, right? Yeah, okay. So before it, it even became anything, it was known in the shop kind of as the Cuban car. Uh -huh. And that was the genesis for the conversation about how, what we were gonna create. Okay. So we wanted something that looked vintage. And some of the cars that we have are an exact perfect duplicate of the way the car ran in a particular race. We have one customer that has a Tissot car that's exactly like Tissot ran in 74 at Le Mans. It's gorgeous. Wow. It's stunning, you know? And then wow. we've got, we've got a, a replica of the Tag Heuer car that they ran back in the, in the uh, actually, I think that was in the 90s, early 90s. So some of the cars are, are replicas. Other cars are kind of made up. This car was made up. Uh, All right. We queried a lot of other cars out there. And this is actually, this color combination there's a vintage car out there that has a similar paint scheme. Uh-huh. It and, looks kind of familiar. And that's exactly what we're, it's, it's kind of like a sample. Like, a, like a, when a DJ samples a record, you're like, yes. mm, you know, this sounds good. Yeah, right? I know that. Yeah. yeah so, Where did I see that? Right. Yeah. So we used that as the base, and then we just made the whole story up around it. So the H. Upman brand of cigars, because we wanted to do a cigar livery. Right, because yes. most of the cars we had were actually up to that point either tobacco or alcohol, so we were running with it. <laughs> and uh, and cigars are one of the coolest things out of Cuba. Absolutely, I don't know the story 
exactly, but the legend as it has been told to me is that Kennedy decided he, prior to signing the papers for the embargo, wanted some cigars. And H. Upman was his brand of choice. Ah. So I'm told that either he held out till an aide delivered, you know, thousands of boxes to him, or there's another story really? about pre-embargo tobacco that was, you know, brought over yeah. and stored. And, and Anyhow, that's what started that, right? So then we made up a whole story around that. What if there was a guy racing in Trans Am back in the day, you know, and he was gonna do this, so where would he get his car? So we, we kind of started with, with this. You know, a lot of vintage race cars back in the day had the, the dealership on the fender, on the front fender, right? Yes. And those of you of a particular vintage would probably recognize this dealership name. Um, if you don't recognize it, this was actually Brumos Motors before Brumos. So back when they were the Volkswagen dealership, this was their name. When they were awarded the Porsche dealership, I think they were in Miami Springs originally, they took their teletype prefix and they, uh, well there's an O in there too, right? Yes. And, you know, they took the teletype prefix, which was Brumos, and they moved to Jacksonville. Ah. Uh, so. That so, would have been in the 50s? Yeah, I think it was like 58 or 59, yeah. somewhere in there. So that was, you know, that's how our imaginary Cuban guy, that's where he got his car, right? Uh -huh. Went up there and got the car. Uh -huh. This actually is a real campaign from back in the day. She's actually pretty famous. And, uh, uh, yeah. and there I are remember a lot the of outfit. posters. And yeah. the maracas. Yep, there are a lot of posters that they were using when they were trying to grow the uh, casino uh, business down there, right? Ah, uh, yeah. So, um, so near yet so foreign. Yep. <laughs> like a trip to Europe, but you only have to go a couple hundred miles yeah, across right. the ocean. You can get there pretty quick. Yeah. Um, there are other little Easter eggs in this thing as you, you know, the, the front of the car, of course. I'm sure people will recognize what that actually means so you mean 935 no i'm talking about the fumar oh fumar what yeah. does that mean i, I don't speak spanish I, what's it mean smoke, smoke yeah right smoke. so yeah this is beautifully done by the way i yep. wouldn't race this thing that paint job is too good <laughs> this car was originally red when we built it it was painted this we call this akimoto white it's basically the whitest white we can get so we just created it out of a bunch of like 77 Chevrolet van colors that we combined, so. Bad story, Mark. Yeah, well, no. it's uh, This, in fact, was the color of Ferry Porsche's favorite white car that he gave to his wife on their 30th wedding anniversary. That sounds way no, really better. I made that up. That what, really else, what else do we have going here? So, as you move back, there's more discovery in it. There's more Easter eggs. You can see that, that Bibbo has a bit of an allegiance going on there. <laughs> he um, looks pissed. Yeah. Yes, he certainly does. Why Michelin? Uh, it was a, another thing that kind of fit with the with the feeling of of it from back in the day, right? Ah, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, these cars actually run in the class on Hoosier tires. Hoosier's been very nice about you know not being too upset that Michelin's so prominently displayed there. That's we make good sure for that we have their brand. Feel. Yeah. I see. Yep. So Hoosier's the tire you actually run. Affirmative. Yeah, we run on an R7. So. Okay, what's going on down here? So my Russian, friend, my Russian friends tell me that that actually says industry of the dark man. And the reason that it says that is that that stands for shyster industries, right? That's the way that it, that it comes out in, yes. in Russian. Yes. So yeah. the reason it says shyster industries is that in our research, we found out that, the, that Khrushchev had the SS-4 shyster missile pointed at us. Oh. Right? So we're like, wow, it'd be kind of cool if it was shyster industries. <laughs> So that's how that came to be. I see. Um, the back, the whole uh, TWA thing, the fly to Cuba direct, it was just another tongue-in-cheek joke about, you know, when we were kids, I'm talking about you and I, Randy, remember yep. every other newscast was another hijacking to Cuba. So, yeah. Um, yeah, in the good old days, they used to just take the plane and fly it to Cuba. Yeah. Yep. They were nicer. <laughs> I guess you could say that. I wonder yes. what happened to those planes. Do they ever get them back? 
that'll be a, a that'll be another story. Yeah. <laughs> that's so cool. I love the TWA. That's just so vintage. Transworld Airlines. Yeah. They've been out of business since seventies. I believe so. Maybe they made the eighties. Yeah. I'm not sure. And what about nine thirty five? What does that stand for? Well, that's uh, so that's been my number in PCA and a couple different cars for a number of years. Um, PCA is kind enough to allow a three-digit number. I was always kind of shocked that they just nobody ever actually seized on that number before. Yeah. So I took it um, for the Porsche people out there. They know how prolific that is to tell us what a 935 of, is for all the Chevy fans. I want you to do that because I want it, you'll what? you'll get way more passionate and wax poetic about it. Not so, me. Yeah. No, I just, the 935 was the racing Porsche 911 Turbo, the twin turbo. Like we used to see at Daytona when I was a kid there in 1981, two red glowing globes that show right out under the back of the car. 935 is an epic number in Porsche history. Yes, prolific, absolutely. Yes, indeed. Of course, you have it on a non-turbo car here. Yeah, that's kind of pushing the, the comedy limits, but the GT car that we run in PCA as well was a turbo car for a while, and that's uh -huh. that's where we had the number on first. So close enough. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yep. Yep. And so this is one of your customer cars. Yes. Uh, this is a very nice gentleman out of Texas. Uh, Ziggy is his first name. Ziggy loves blue. All of his cars are blue. Uh, this is a factory color on this car. And wow. um, he wanted to keep it that way, and we tried to find a way to develop a livery kind of on that base color. So this is another car that's completely made up. It doesn't exist. This livery doesn't exist anywhere. But it was, you know, how do we, how do we create something that looks vintage? The cool part about this is that I for the, it. for the most part, there are a lot of of things that mean a lot to Ziggy, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, it's he, very personal. Yeah, he's in the oil industry, thus the, the brand, uh, the, the, the main sponsorship on it. Yeah, um, this is a German oil company? Petroleum or, company, I remember yep. the gas stations yep. when yeah. I've been there. Yeah. How do you say that? Is it Aral? I don't know. I don't either. Yeah. I, I say Aral, we, but... We're gonna say it that way. Yeah. Right. Maybe someone can, you know, can correct us on that. And is this, like, Ethanol or no, uh, premium fuel? I think that means all is super, doesn't it? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Is that so, a, an Aral thing? I or? believe so. Okay. You, we need to get the German guy here to answer these questions. Yes, just, the know. German Texan. Yeah, right? Yeah, he just told us he's a, a dual citizen. Or? Yeah. Yeah. So there are other things on here like the chocolate. He loves chocolate, so lint oh. chocolate is his favorite chocolate. Okay. The beer on top is, uh, is from his hometown, as I understand it. Cellar. Yep. Right? Yep. Cellar beer. Established 1893. So good to see my friend Mark White at Akimoto at Road Atlanta. Mark came away from the weekend with three wins and a second in 911 Cup class in Porsche Club Racing. And that indicates that at Akimoto, when they be able when they build those exquisite cars, both the race cars and their perfect street cars, they've got track cred. They're being bu built by somebody who races the same cars and who wins. So it's more than just a show car. It's more than just beautiful. It works. Mark, thank you so much. Great hanging out with you. Next time I want to drive, we'll, let's get hooked up in better weather. You need to come south anyway, because Akimoto's in Madison, Wisconsin, and winter's coming.